Hello, 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 and welcome to myfinanceteacher.org. As you see over here, back a few days ago, on the 11th of May, I gave my update to the members at myfinanceteacher.org on uh, what might be happening to uh, precious metals, what might be happening to gold. At that time, I mentioned that I had uh, two scenarios in mind. Uh, one of the scenarios when uh, gold actually finished with its uh, daily cycle over here between early March and late May, lasting for around 52 days, although that decline into late May was uh, relatively modest when gold only dropped from around 1800 all the way down to this uh, low on the 29th of April. By the way, did I say late May? I mean uh, late April. On the 29th of April down to only about 1756 or so. So one of the scenarios was that uh, the daily cycle in gold did finish with a relatively mild decline uh, the daily cycle lasting for around 52 days. And that would be uh, relatively more bullish for gold, since gold is uh, now in a relatively younger daily cycle, generally trending upwards for quite a while. But, as I mentioned to the members, in both of these scenarios that I'm going to have a look at, I did expect a bit of a pullback down from this resistance. The resistance is uh, basically based from this downtrend line that's uh, been more or less... Uh, respected all the way back from August 2020 and also there is a bit of a resistance from, from this uh, January to uh, February highs. January highs over here at around uh, 1870, 1875 and uh, February highs over here somewhere around uh, 1855, 1860. So I think there is a confluence of uh, resistance zones over here and the 200-day moving average, this uh, purple line over here, is also relatively close, although gold is now a little bit above that 200-day moving average. In either case, there are several factors pr producing some of these potential resistance zones anywhere between this 1850 to around 1875. So for that reason, even if gold is in a new cycle starting over here from uh, 29th of April, I think there will be a bit of a pull back down in gold, perhaps down into the middle of the Bollinger Bands. After all, gold is now ready to poke again above the Bollinger Bands uh, repeatedly after it did poke a couple of times over here earlier at the beginning of last week and at the end of uh, the week before that. So perhaps just a little bit tiny touch higher over here in gold uh, before a bit of a pull back down. And I think what I'm going to do is uh, once the markets open in the US, I might actually reduce my uh, allocation to precious metals just a little bit tiny touch bit. Uh, as you know, I have uh, several parts to my portfolio. One of those is uh, related to precious metals. Uh, that part of the portfolio is now fully allocated, although it's uh, only about a quarter of the total portfolio. So out of that fully allocated 25% in the precious metals, I might actually reduce that just by a tiny touch uh, and uh, try to get back in. I'll be looking forward to get back in uh, relatively soon after a bit of a pull down, after a bit of a correction in gold into the ongoing intermediate cycle in gold. In the intermediate term, I'm pretty bullish on gold. I think the ongoing intermediate cycle started over here at the beginning of March and it's only so far um, just about uh, less than one and a half months old. So uh, the intermediate cycle is still pretty young and uh, generally I, th I think gold might retest this round number of $2,000 uh, sometime over the next several weeks within the ongoing intermediate cycle. After a bit of a correction within the ongoing short-term daily cycle I see gold uh, pushing higher perhaps into that next resistance zone at around 1920 or so uh, before coming down into the end of that ongoing short-term daily cycle. Usually cycles last for about a couple of months, so perhaps a bit of a correction down into late June within this scenario. Another scenario, as I mentioned to the members uh, a few days ago, is that uh, the daily cycle in gold is actually still ongoing and it's getting a little bit late. It's uh, perhaps now on day 70, which is still not unlikely. Usually daily cycles in gold last anywhere between uh, one and a half to two and a half months. So two and a half months is still not very unusual for a duration of a daily cycle. And uh, sometimes these cycles might last even longer than two and a half months. 
So uh, the second scenario based on an ongoing daily cycle over here is that the correction in gold from the resistance levels that we've just mentioned is going to be a little bit more severe down to that say 50-day moving average or down into the lower range of the Bollinger Bands and that will finally give us the end of an ongoing daily cycle which would by then last for about two and a half months. Still pretty close to a usual duration. And the continuation of a new daily cycle, continuation of the ongoing intermediate cycle after that. So that's what I see on gold so far. Uh, GDX is so far pretty good as well, although it's uh, poked above the Bollinger Bands as well. GDX is also above the 200 day moving average. As I mentioned, perhaps another couple of days of slightly higher precious metals to give GDX another poke above the Bollinger Bands and repeated pokes above Bollinger Bands uh, often indicate a bit of a turnaround, uh, although uh, right now Bollinger Bands are not very wide on GDX. Uh, whenever Bollinger Bands are somewhat narrow, uh, these uh, pokes are uh, generally less important. Looking at the optimism index on gold, although in the short term I think there is a chance that gold might actually correct for just a few days. In the intermediate term, again, we don't see anything dangerous over here. The optimism index on gold is still only at 70. When it gets uh, closer to 80, uh, that's when uh, people are getting a little bit uh, too excited on gold, and that's when uh, the intermediate cycle is um, approaching its top. That's when you want to start getting a little bit uh, cautious. But for now, everything is um, still looking pretty good over the next uh, several weeks. Next, I want to have a look at Bitcoin. And uh, as I mentioned to the members at myfinanceteacher.org, also a few days ago on the 13th of May, uh, what I mentioned is that a couple of weeks ago, I, I had thought that the cycle in Bitcoin did finish over here, lasting only for about 31 days uh, from uh, late March all the way down into late April. But I also mentioned that a uh, one month cycle is extremely unusual. U usually Bitcoin cycles last for around a couple of months. Since then, on the 13th of May over here, when I posted that update at all the members at myfinanceteacher.org, we saw that the true Bitcoin cycle was still ongoing with, with this huge red candle indicating that Bitcoin is ready to go back down into the end of its uh, usual two-month cycle. And what I mentioned then is that Bitcoin is approaching that cycle low and I said it's probably a good idea to wait for another few days to see where exactly is that cycle low going to occur. Uh, that was generally a good idea as Bitcoin is since uh, considerably lower and it looks like Bitcoin is now 53 days into its uh, two-month cycle. Uh, cycles usually last for a couple of months. So I think Bitcoin is pretty close to uh, bottoming out. And uh, here are several good signs that you might see on Bitcoin. First, it's already poked multiple, multiple times below the relatively wide Bollinger Bands. Such a situation usually forecasts a turnaround in the trend, so we'll likely see an uptrend relatively soon, giving us a new cycle in Bitcoin. Uh, that's one I'm going to add to my Bitcoin positions. Unfortunately, I didn't sell any Bitcoin, but I'm also not fully allocated in uh, my cryptocurrency related part of the portfolio. So I'm just going to add to the positions. As in the long term, I am still bullish in uh, cryptocurrencies. And for a long term video, uh, check out the recent video on 100k Bitcoin. The link to that video is down in the description. Another thing you might see on Bitcoin over here is a bit of a head and shoulders formation uh, where you see this neckline is uh, uh, tilted a little bit uh, down on the right side. And generally, you'll see that the height of this formation is quite large, somewhere around uh, 14 to 15,000. So as Bitcoin has recently broken down from this neckline, a uh, breakdown below that uh, low on the 13th of May, that's a breakdown below 46,000 or so. Another 15,000, 14, 15,000 down from here is actually all the way back to the recent lows from late January, somewhere around $32,000. So uh, that actually does look pretty, pretty scary. But what I think is even if that is going to develop on Bitcoin, uh, that's possibly going to develop over the next several weeks. But in the short term, uh, Bitcoin is already getting pretty, pretty oversold and uh, bounce at least back into the middle 
of the Bollinger Bands is highly likely over the next few days. Although before adding to the positions I want to see a green candle. If you don't have any positions, congratulations. If you, before uh, starting with any sort of positions, you want to see a green candle so that you don't want to risk catching a falling knife. And next, let's have a look at the Bitcoin Optimism Index. And we see that the Optimism Index is already pretty low at uh, 24. Uh, that's uh, pretty close to this green line. And uh, this is as of uh, Friday. Uh, by now, this Optimism Index is going to be updated. I'm sure it's already below the green line. So uh, it's been uh, below the green line generally for the last few days. And that generally means that Bitcoin is uh, ready to give us at least some sort of a bounce. Even if we go back to this March 2020 lows when Bitcoin dropped to that really, really significant low at $5,000, we see that uh, several days under this green line generally makes Bitcoin turn around and give us at least a bit of a relief bounce. So I am getting ready with my trigger. I am getting ready to increase my allocation to Bitcoin. Uh, next, let's have a look at the discounts, uh, discounts on GBTC, this uh, ETF that trades Bitcoin. And generally what you see is that when the premiums, uh, the positive value over here is a premium, negative value over here is a discount versus the net asset value of that ETF. Uh, when the premiums are low, or when Bitcoin goes into a discount, basically, uh, that's when uh, the market is really, really pessimistic on Bitcoins. And that's when you want to enter. When the premiums are really, really high, that's when the markets are really too optimistic, too excited, too euphoric about Bitcoin. And uh, that's when uh, the market is ready to top. That's when you generally want to reduce your positions. So with the discount now close to record lows, with the record lows being um, on Thursday, and uh, this data is as of Friday, I think it's uh, not a good idea to uh, panic sell right here. What I want to do is, uh, again, as I mentioned, get ready with my trigger, get ready to increase my positions. And of course, when I do actually increase my positions, uh, the members at myfinanceteacher.org will be notified immediately. But before that happens, uh, this is my uh, view on uh, precious metals and cryptocurrencies. Let me know what do you think, whether you agree or disagree with my opinions. And uh, if you do disagree, what are the reasons for the disagreement? So again, share your opinion. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and good luck in your trades.